Good morning, friends. Good morning. And a warm welcome to King's Park Church as we join together here in the sanctuary and at home to worship God. It's good to see everyone here, especially for coming out today like this. Can I just say that immediately after this service, we're invited through by the children and staff of the Sunday School to the large hall to share in tea and coffee and a place of home baking as well. This would normally be the time when the Sunday School would have had their annual bringing by sale. That's not happening. So instead we're invited through for a cup of tea and coffee and a chat and any donations that are received will go to the Royal Hospital for Children. So please support that if you can. And finally, can I welcome back the Reverend Esther Minion to lead us in worship. Esther was here at the beginning of December. So the Reverend told us it was 12 years between his visits to King's Park. So it's good to be able to wait until you come back. So we welcome you back and we we'll look forward to the same place as well. Good morning. Good morning. It's lovely to be back with you again, even on this brief February morning. Our call to worship, give praise to the Creator with all your heart. Give praise to the Redeemer with all your heart. Give praise to the Spirit with all your heart. So let us do that, worshiping God within 96. You are before me, Lord, you are behind. Christ. 
we come to lift up our hearts as we lift up our voices to celebrate again the good news. You are the God of love and mercy. We praise you. But as we bring our praise, we also bring our confession. Confession that too often our praise has been hollow, our worship restricted to Sundays, our unwillingness to go out into the deep water. The deep water of speaking about you. The deep water of serving you publicly. The deep water of believing that whatever we do, wherever we go, you are here with us, inspiring, guiding, supporting. We know that when we come with true repentance, you will forgive and renew. So in the quiet, we confess how we have failed. Merciful God, you forgive us. So help us to practice what we preach. Help us to proclaim you by how we live. Strengthen our discipleship that we may not let you down. You are the God of love and mercy we praise you. And so may all we say, all we do, and all that we are witness to you and the wonder of your love shown through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to praise, say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thy name is the kingdom, power, and glory be to God. Boys and girls, and it's great to hear that you're having a cup of tea after the service. That's lovely, and I hope everyone is, is able to will join you for that and a time of chatting and a time where other people will gain out of us having fun. So that's wonderful. Now, I want you to think back. Can you remember when someone taught you how to tie shoelaces? Yeah, was it difficult? Did somebody help you, show you? Just like yourself. Do you remember learning to read at school? Did somebody help teach you to read? Who's that? Yes. It was the teacher, yes. Can you remember when you play sports? Do you play, play a game? No? Go dancing, learn dancing? Do you learn dancing? Oh, gymnastics. No, that can be so. Oh, gymnastics. You can do yourself a nasty in gymnastics. Do you remember when, when you, or not even remember, when you're learning something new, it can be difficult. And who is it helps you? Your coach helps you. You know, throughout life, there are difficult things we have to learn. I remember when I was about maybe one or two, being sent with a message for a teacher further up the school. And when I went into the class, the class were not learning long division. I don't know if you learn long division now. The line was a long, and up and a long, a number here and a big long number there, and you need to get the answer over there. And it looked very complicated to me. And there was a boy getting a bow for doing it wrong, because in my day you got bows for things like that. You don't nowadays. And I left that class having delivered the message and went back to my class and for days I worried about this thing called long division. Because I forgot that I would be taken step by step by various teachers until I was ready to do a long division sum. And when it got to long division sum, my teacher would help me, and she would teach me how to do a long division sum. You know, learning about Jesus is like that, because sometimes we, we learn things from Jesus, like we're to love one another. And that means sometimes difficult things at school. If someone's not very popular in the class, 
We shouldn't be joining in with the people that are ignoring them. We should be trying to make friends with them. And if someone is, if a friend of ours is maybe bullying somebody else, we've got to tell an adult, but also the maybe it would be worth saying to our friend, you shouldn't keep doing that. And all these things are very, very difficult. And it, most of us would say, well, maybe I'll, I'll let an adult do that, or I'll do that. I'll just kid on this unpopular person. Uh, is out of sight and I'll just ignore them like everybody else. It's easier to go with everybody else sometimes. But sometimes Jesus says to us, we have to stand up for love and for caring. But he doesn't leave us on our own to do it. He gives us the strength to do it through the Spirit. He's with us, helping us do the right thing, no matter how difficult the right thing might be. So sometimes when you're caught and you know what the right thing is, but you're frightened to do it, just remember it's not me on my own. It's me with Jesus by my side. Just like throughout life, all of us are still learning. Even an old fuddy-duddy like me, I still have to learn new things. And someone helps me to learn. And certainly in looking back, I'm sure the older people, not the old people, the older people in the congregation, will tell you that at times in their life they've been very aware of Jesus being beside them, giving them the strength to do the right thing through the Spirit of God. So now we're going to sing Spirit of God unseen as the wind. <coughs> readings this morning are both from the New Testament. The first is from Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verses 1 to 11. It's headed the resurrection of Christ. And now I want to remind you, my friends, of the good news which I preached to you, which you received and in which your faith stands firm. That is the gospel, the message that I preached to you. You are saved by the gospel if you hold firmly to it unless it was for nothing that you believed. I passed on to you what I received, which is of the greatest importance, that Christ died for our sins as written in the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised to life three days later as written in the scriptures, that he appeared to Peter and then to all 12 apostles. Then he appeared to more than 500 of his followers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James and afterwards to all the, the apostles. Last of all, he appeared also to me, even though I am like someone whose birth was abnormal. For I am the least of all the apostles. 
I do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted God's church. But by God's grace I am what I am. And the grace that he gave me was not without effect. On the contrary, I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, although it was not really my own doing, but God's grace working within me. So then, whether it came from me or from them, this is what we all preach, and this is what you believe. And then from Luke chapter 5, reading from verses 1 to 11, and it's headed, Jesus calls the first disciples. One day Jesus was standing on the shore of Lake Gennesaret while the people pushed their way up to him to listen to the word of God. He saw two boats pulled up on the beach. The fishermen had left them and were washing the nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, which belonged to Simon, and asked him to push off a little from the shore. Jesus sat in the boat and taught the crowd. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, push the boat out further to the deep water and you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon answered, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will let down the nets. So they let them down and caught such a large number of fish that the nets were about to break. So they motioned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full of fish that the boats were about to sink. When Simon Peter saw what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. And then he and the others with him were all amazed at the large number of fish they had caught. The same was true of Simon's partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. They pulled their boats up on the beach, left everything, and followed Jesus. Amen, and may God bless these readings from his holy word. Thank you. Now the next hymn you don't know, it is a lovely hymn. Lord, you have come to the seashore, neither searching for the rich nor the, nor, or the wise. I think we'll hear it played through once and then we'll stand and sing it together. Try to, it is a, it's a lovely hymn, very meaningful hymn. <laughs>
Well, didn't you do well? That was super. It's a lovely hymn, and it might be the earwig or the earworm for the rest of the day, but Highland Cathedral might be it as well. On the 13th of May 1940, as Britain, a tiny island at the edge of Europe, stood alone against the Nazi regime, which seemed intent on swallowing up as much of Europe as possible, the new elderly British Prime Minister told Parliament, many of whom were against him and his idea of fighting on, he told them, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. What is our policy? To wage war against a monstrous tyranny never surpassed in the dark, lamentable catalogue of human crime. What is our aim? Victory. Victory at all cost. Victory in spite of terror. Victory however long and hard the road might be. For without victory there is no survival. A great Churchillian speech. A speech which hid none of the stark reality of the task in front of the nation. A speech which told it as it was. No spin. No evasion. Just the plain unadorned truth. A speech which only offered the deep waters of challenge, striving for a greater good. A speech which called on the hearers to dig deep within themselves, for by digging deep, they would achieve great things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On a hot, sunny day, the new preacher in Capernaum was by the side of Lake Galilee, was again surrounded by a crowd of eager listeners. He'd already healed one of the fishermen's mother-in-laws. He'd preached at the synagogue. He'd then gone away for a while to allow the reaction to calm down. But here he was again, by the side of the lake, people crowding in on him, really realizing that to be heard by so many he'd be better to be out in the water a bit to allow his boat to carry. Simon, before this, was along with his partner doing what fishermen did after a hard, fruitless night's fishing. He was mending his nets. Mending his nets and beginning to earwig on what the man of Nazareth was saying now. And in his boat, they set off a wee bit from shore. The man spoke, the people listened, and so did Simon. The speech rang bells. It held attention. It spoke in ways that many other religious teachers' speeches didn't. Simon was impressed. Simon was beginning to nibble at the bait of the good news. This seemed believable. It seemed honest. Simon was no doubt thinking that if the man stayed locally, he, Simon, would have no problem, no problem at all, in hearing him when he had a minute and maybe following him a, a bit more than he followed any of the other religious teachers about. Simon, you see, was listening, but he was listening from a comfortable place, from his boat at the edge of his lake, within walking distance of his home and his loved ones. The sun was shining always well with the world until the bombshell. Simon, push out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Push out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Now, this man may have healed his mother-in-law. He may seem to be talking sense about God and the world. But this man wasn't and never would be a fisherman if he thought that the answer to a bad night's fishing lay in the deep waters 
during the height of the day. Because everyone with a modicum of, of knowledge about fishing in that lake knew that the way to catch the fish was in the shallows at night. In the shallows at night. Push out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon was immediately out of his comfort zone. Simon was immediately being challenged. This man who'd seemed to Simon to one that he could relate to within his comfort zone, the man whom Simon would have followed uh, where, as long as where he led was where it seemed right to Simon, this man was asking Simon to do something so bizarre, quite frankly so stupid, that Simon could end up publicly looking a fool. So at this moment, Simon had a choice. He could do nothing and ignore the man, or he could do what the man asked and be seen as a follower of the man. There was no middle way. There was no third way. The choice was there. He could ignore or he could follow. What he couldn't do was pick and choose what he liked. And that's maybe part of the problem for the church in the 21st century, is that people like to pick and choose bits about the Christian faith. They like to tick the box in the census saying they're Christian, but then they don't come to church regularly. Maybe come to church when the golf course is flooded, or when there's a big national emergency, or when there's something in their heart, but they don't want to come Sunday by Sunday. And if they come to church Sunday by Sunday, they maybe don't want to get involved in the church the rest of the week. They want to take Christianity and keep it within their comfort zone, where they feel they are in control. They are the ones who probably say they are Christian, but would run a mile when they were asked to push out into the deep water and let down your nets. Once the challenge is laid down, once you're asked to leave your comfort zone, you're asked then to enter in the adventure of living the faith. For some people, that's when things begin to unravel a tad. But Simon did. Simon did push out into the deep water. Simon did let his nets down for a catch. He must have felt a prized chump. He'd be aware of the sniggers from the crowd, the disbelief of his fellow fishermen. He must have been wondering, even as he did what Christ asked of him, he must have been wondering, why am I doing this? But the end result? So many fish that the nets began to give way under the hall and they'd call for help. Fish seemed to be jumping into their nets, swimming towards the boat, the boat lemming-like, ready to fall into the net. The man asked him to do something so stupid as far as human wisdom was concerned, and yet it worked. By putting faith in this man, Simon was challenged to set aside human wisdom and trust in God. And by taking that big step, a whole new world was opened up to Simon, which would have remained a mirage if he had kept his feet firmly on the ground and refused to push out into the deep water and let down his nets for a catch. You see, that's what happens when people meet Christ. When a certain young man called Saul met his followers only a few years later, Saul knew this Jesus of Nazareth, knew him well, even if he was dead. You see, Saul knew his faith, his scriptures, his concordances, his commentaries, knew them all back to front, upside down. Saul knew God. And he knew what God wanted of men. He was zealous. He was committed. 
and he was more than delighted to be asked to stamp out the poor, deluded folk who followed the way of Jesus Christ. But on his way to do that, he lost his sight and found his soul as he met Christ risen, who asked him to push out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. This meant he also had to look stupid. The men who'd previously held him in such high esteem, who'd seen such a glittering career lying in front of him, would, for the rest of his life, take great delight in mocking him, demeaning him, whipping him, imprisoning him. But that was as nothing compared to the great challenge and rewards which Saul, now known as Paul, delighted in as he travelled far and wide, as he wrote hither and thither to check that men and women still held true to the gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, whose grace allowed Paul to do so much. And that still happens today when we meet Christ. It happens time and again during our Christian life and our journey with him. We're asked to push out into the deep water and let down our nets for a catch. We're asked to do something way out of our comfort zone. Something that, if we're honest, we'd rather not do. Something that could lead us open to scorn, to derision. Something that will ask more of us than we feel we can give. But we're not asked to go out into the deep water and let down our nets alone. We're promised that just like Simon, Jesus will be in the boat with us and he'll be ready to help us haul in the nets overflowing by the time that we're ready to do that. That is what living with Christ is all about. The gospel in which we stand, the gospel which brings us salvation is all about pushing out into the deep water and letting down our nets for a catch. And that's what needed in the church in 2022. The church needs and Christ challenges us. But as he challenges, he supports. He supports us by the presence through the fellowship of the faith. He supports us by the nurture of his word and his body and blood. He upholds us by the spirit, the one he promised to leave behind so that all who respond are not asked to respond in our own ability, but to respond through him. You see, we can't respond in our own strength. Simon couldn't have responded in his own strength. Neither could Paul. But with Christ at our side, with Christ and his spirit working through us, there is no limit to what can be achieved. The church sometimes isn't good at challenging. It's maybe better at comforting. But when big deeds are needed, when men and women have to dig into their very being, then they respond better to being told. Churchill knew that. Hence the speech on the 13th of May, 1940. A century before that, Garibaldi, just starting the unification of Italy, knew that when he told his troops, I can offer you neither honour or wages. I will offer you hunger, thirst, forced marches, battles and death. Anyone who loves his country, follow me. They followed, he was right, and they succeeded. So if it worked for great war leaders, how much more will it work when we respond to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? Push out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. The lake out there is teeming with fish. It's up to you and me along with the Spirit, to do what Christ asks and follow him. 
And may the power and the glory, the dominion and the might be with the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as it was, is and ever shall be. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you come into our lives and ask that the talents already given by you may be used to advance your kingdom here and abroad. We thank you for your call, which comes to us, the call of discipleship, that you call us as we are and where we are, with all our doubts, all our faults, all our sin. We thank you for all whom you have called in the past, all who pointed us to you, and all who come after us. We thank you for the call and ask you simply, but also sincerely, to help us respond in your name. And so, Lord, we pray for those who are wrestling with demanding questions facing complex matters of conscience with confusing moral questions with your call to service. With With awkward choices between good and evil, right and wrong, truth and falsehood, love and hate, between the way of the world and the way of Christ. Give to all the courage of Simon to go out into the deep waters, trust in you, and then pull in full nets. On this day, we give thanks for our Queen, for our, her 70 years of service to this country, for her willingness as a young woman to push out into the deep waters, to pick up the reins from her late father and to move forward, pledging herself to be in service to the country and to the Commonwealth. May we all be willing to serve like she has served. We ask your blessing on all who mourn this day, thinking of the the family of the wee boy in Morocco, where people did push out and do their best to bring him safely home from the well, but despite their very efforts, he died. Give to his parents, his family, those who knew him and those who worked to save them. Give them your comfort at this difficult time. And we pray for this country as we still try to come to terms with COVID and all that it means, 
as we face up to economic problems, as some of our number face very difficult choices between heating and eating, and many are worried about what the future may hold, give to the governments both in Westminster and Holyrood the wisdom and the fellow feeling to help where it is needed and to guide us safely out of this economic storm. We pray for those affected by climate change, those facing drought, those facing floods, those whose very land is being eroded by storms. Help us to do our bit to help save the planet that you created. We give thanks for those who are now at peace with you. Grant us their faith, their hope and their ending. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Our final hymn today is As a Fire is Meant for Burning with a Bright and warm Warming Flame. You don't know this one either, but you should know the tune, hopefully. water. Go out with the Spirit of God beside you. Go, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you and remain with you this day and forever. <laughs>